this thing is pretty much daylight robbery. But I'll admit that it tastes pretty good. The tea, that is, tastes pretty good. The bubble, the bobas in it, is pretty bad. The things you do when you can't buy bubble tea. So you may have noticed something different about this footage, particularly something about the lighting. It's actually kind of decent, you know? And the reason for that is this light that I just got. Basically, I just got completely sick and tired of the lighting being complete garbage in this room whenever I'm in here. I decided to spend as little money as I can reasonably expect to halfway solve the problem and the result of that is this light. So it like it clips onto my desk, ostensibly adjustable. I would prefer it to be able to go a bit higher. Well, this is the maximum height it would go. This is something that you could put a smart home, a smartphone holder on, and it doesn't have a mount for like more conventional cameras. This is pretty much useless at this point. But hey, you know it was cheap. I got it mainly for the light and I guess I got the light. I can probably be a makeup channel now. So the circuit breaker in Singapore has officially ended and we are officially in phase one of the recovery phase. But in practice, that really doesn't make much of a difference. Phase one has some of the workspaces opening again, has some of the schools opening again, but for the rest of us, it's pretty much exactly the same. I think we're all waiting for phase two at this point where many things will start returning to normal again, where limited visiting will be allowed again, restaurants will be open for dining again, and so on and so forth. What I hear, what we're hearing is that if the cases don't go up in phase one, then we can expect to enter phase two maybe sometime end of this month, which would be nice. Speaking of normal, literally halfway around the world, not halfway, all the way around the world in the US, I guess life is far from normal for many people over there right now. And so I don't want to get into the issues at hand, there's a lot to talk about there, but it's kind of a rabbit hole and you know, it's a very difficult time for them over there. You know, there's a lot of clashes, a lot of chaos and uncertainty. So I think that, you know, we could also try to keep these people in their prayers alongside the people in the rest of the world who are still suffering from the fallout of the COVID pandemic. Keep the suffering people of the world, you know, always in our prayers.
It is Friday, it is 6.30 p.m. and another week is over, more or less. It's a cloudy evening, but I was hoping to get a clear night. Because there was a piece of news the other day about some guy who managed to film the Milky Way in Singapore. If it's cloudy, then that's, that's a complete lost cause. So. So, if you look at this, it looks like I have something really important to tell you. But that is not true, I don't actually have anything to say. I'm just doing this because I thought to myself I might as well try to push the lighting conditions to as good a point as I can with this new light so that you know when I edit this, this weekend, I can look at it and I can think whether that's good enough or whether I need to make adjustments. So this is purely to kind of try out this lighting, right? So this is kind of a dramatic shot. My face really big, right? And now if I move back a bit, this is a more casual kind of distance. And this is basically the framing for my rambles that I usually do in these vlogs. You know, I kind of try to arrange the background a little bit. You can see a little bit of a fake ass you know, light over there. It looks pretty good, right, on the preview here right now. I'm hoping that it looks pretty good after I edit it as well. But yeah, just pretend that I'm talking about something that's actually useful. I think it looks pretty good from here anyway. Here's another angle and actually I like this pretty much. It looks pretty good on the thingy, right? And it's a more comfortable distance maybe. And what I kind of like is that there's more stuff in the background. You can see my Konosuba poster over here and makes the background a bit more interesting and my fake ass light now that I move it over there you know gives everything a very nice I don't know romantic feel that's probably enough fooling around for one night I'll see you tomorrow So before ending off this vlog, I just want to kind of weigh in after all a little bit on the situation that's unfolding on the other side of the world. Now I'm going to keep myself very general here. So one thing that I agree with Mr. Barack Obama about is that cynicism is a choice. Now cynicism I think is kind of a very easy 
or even a very natural reaction to how you know as we grow up we begin to absorb more and more information about the things that's going on in the world around us and a lot of that information even most of that information is about bad things that's going on in the world it's about bad people especially bad people in high places and that sort of you know environment makes cynicism i guess a very common and a very easy response you get the feeling that you're helpless against how broken and how chaotic the world is now i say it's an easy reaction but i don't necessarily think it's a nuanced reaction because here's the thing as human beings it is our tendency to pick out bad things and talk about them right my old professor dr ben used to tell me that uh, the way you find out if you know something an event or a program or anything is going well is if you don't hear anything about it if you don't hear anything about it that means it's going well and that's how humans work right and that's why we are constantly flooded with information about bad things going on in the world because people don't talk about good things and that doesn't mean that good things don't exist in this world if you go out there and if you keep your eyes open there is reason for hope Barack Obama says that cynicism is as much a choice as hope is I stumbled upon this article written by some high-ranking army officials in the United States Army and uh, it's an article talking about the civil unrest what strikes me about it is that uh, these people seem to be talking on principle like whether or not you agree with uh, their principles and whether or not you think they're on the right track with it is aside from the point the point here is that they're saying things that I imagine would hardly endear them to the powers that be and yet they're saying it and that says something Right. This is a very counter cynical point of view to look at. A cynical attitude tends to get you to believe that people in places of power are there for the benefits of power. That's true uh, in many cases, but not in all. And I think that this is a good example. Right? These are people are talking, saying things that would possibly even put you know, their selfish interests in jeopardy, but they're doing it out of principle. So here's my suggestion. Don't be cynical, right? Cynicism is just you basically throwing the people that exist out there who are actually trying to do something to make the world better in whatever way they can. You're throwing them to the dogs by being cynical because you're kind of denying their existence. You are magnifying the existence of the problems in the world and you're not really doing anything about it. If you don't do anything to help. The least you can do is not to put down or to deny the existence of people who are working to make the world a better place. And if you can help, even in small ways, please do. I know that that's gonna come out sounding a bit preachy again, but then, hey, welcome to my vlog, I guess. Keep having hope. Keep having hope and do what you can to perpetuate it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next week.